Welcome. My name is Christopher Paisley. I'm a Philadelphia public school teacher, and this is my podcast, Inside White Fragility. Today, we're going to look at the term legal vote and ask ourselves, is that term racist? Is the term legal vote a racist term? Now, according to Ibram X. Kendi, who, by the way, last month equated interracial adoption of African-American children by white parents with colonialism. This was brought up when Amy Coney Barrett was uh, nominated for the Supreme Court, and then he went into this whole um, interracial adoption thing and how white parents can still be racist if they adopt black children. Um, he brought that whole thing up. So that's the same Ibram X. Kendi who says the term um, legal vote is racist. And it's the same Ibram X. Kendi who in college wrote an article that claimed the AIDS virus was being used by whites to control the black population. That same Ibram X. Kendi, well, he claims that the term legal vote is indeed racist. Okay. In a recent t- tweet, this is what Kendi said. The misinformation of widespread voter fraud or illegal voting in Detroit, Philadelphia, Atlanta, and Phoenix, where black and brown votes predominate, is baked into the term legal vote. No matter what GOP propaganda says, there's nothing wrong with those voters and votes, Kendi wrote on Twitter. What makes a term racist is rarely the term's literal meaning and almost always the historical and political context in which the term is being used. So he says there's nothing wrong with these voters or their votes. Now, no one is saying that there's anything wrong with the voters, okay? Whether or not there's something wrong with their votes remains to be seen, which is why you would need an investigation and you would need to look at what is going on with these votes just in terms of voter integrity and voter transparency. But I guess Kendi doesn't want to even go to the uh, place where you're going to be transparent or where you're going to just make sure the integrity of the election is upheld for the American people. Being that 71 million people uh, voted for Donald Trump and possibly some of them may be skeptical about the results. Okay. In other words, Kendi wants to redefine the term according to his own personal politics. The fact that a coalition of 39 House Republicans just sent a letter letter to Attorney General William Barr asking the Department of Justice to investigate allegations of potential voter fraud doesn't seem to matter to Kendi. The letter read in part, and I'll read the letter. Dear Attorney General Barr, While each state runs its own election process, the United States Department of Justice is ultimately responsible for the integrity of federal elections. The American people must have the utmost confidence that the outcome of the presidential election is legitimate. With widespread reports of irregularities, particularly in vote counting process, it is time for you to use the resources of the department to ensure that the process is conducted in a manner that is fully consistent with state and federal law. And it is also important that the process be completely transparent so that the American people will have full confidence in the result. Now, this doesn't seem to matter to Kendi. Neither does the fact that in Nevada, there were over 3,600 possible cases of voter fraud, specifically residents voting in Nevada who no longer live in Nevada. Okay, To Kendi, calling for voter integrity and transparency is somehow racist because Kendi's race-obsessed worldview does not allow him to see past skin color to the actual content of the issue. You don't look past the cover of the book to the content of the pages to the content of the issue. All that matters with people like Kendi and people who use identity politics is the surface, the skin, the gender the sexuality, things like that, okay? Now, Jonathan Church, a leading critic of white fragility theory, recently published an article criticizing Kendi's scholarship in a magazine called Marion West, which was titled, Ibram Kendi's Thesis Could Use a Lot More Rigor. In it, Church criticizes the flaws in Kendi's reasoning, including his belief in monocausality and the origins of racist ideas. And quote, Skeptics are racist, it would appear, because they disagree with Kendi, not because they have legitimate concerns about whether Kendi is correct, that causality only goes one way, or that policies are not the sole cause cause of inequality, or that counterexamples may diminish the force of his claims, Church writes. Logic, facts, and scholarship have little to do with it. Now, by the way, Jonathan Church's new book, which is called Reinventing Racism, Why White Fragility is the Wrong Way to Think About Racial Inequality, is available for pre-order on Amazon, and it's due out on January 13th. 
It provides a great toolkit for resisting Robin D'Angelo's toxic white fragility theory and offers well-thought-out alternatives, so I suggest you go out and purchase a copy of that. Still, from Ibram Kendi's perspective, racial disparities are the sole result of racism, period. Students of color are disproportionately suspended because of racist educational policies, not because their experiences or backgrounds differ in any way from those of their white counterparts. Okay? According to Kendi, all students arrive at school at the exact same place. Now think about that. Think about all the things that go into education and discipline. According to Kendi, all students from all backgrounds of all races come to school at the exact same place, and the disparity in discipline is the sole result of one thing, racism. Okay, this is his thinking. This is his scholarship. All right. Now, interestingly, I wonder what Kendi would say if we use the exact same logic for the 2020 election. The late-breaking disparity of votes for Biden is the evidence of the fraud, period. No other scenario is needed. So when you looked at Michigan and you looked at Pennsylvania and you looked at these other states and all of a sudden there was this disproportionate number of votes going hard for Biden, some irregularities that have not been uh, adequately explained, according to Kendi's philosophy, all you would have to do is say, sure, there's voter fraud and the disparity itself is the evidence of the fraud, according to his thinking. Okay. Now, Kendi's attempts to label any inquiry into voter fraud as racist is just another leftist tactic to silence advocates of voter integrity and to marginalize those who disagree with him, as he so often does, as people like D'Angelo and those people who believe in identity politics so often do. According to Kendi, you are either racist or anti-racist. There is no neutral. To this, I say to Kendi, you are either for voter fraud or against it. There is no in-between. And as evidenced by your attempt to racialize the term legal vote, it appears, Mr. Kendi, that you clearly and fully embrace the latter.